strange mourning items from the 1800s. Sick, but true. This is made out of hair. Creepy death jewelry from the Victorian era. Seven most morbid Victorian death customs. Victorian mourning wreath. As creepy as it sounds. Hair jewelry used to be a thing, and it's totally creeping us out. The Victorian 1800s. era. 1800s. Seven morning creepy hair. morbid Victorian death, death totally jewelry. Totally creepy. <laughs> It's finally October, and that can only mean one thing, that the era of creep bait is upon us once again. And although these articles try to shake you to your core, I'm here to warn you about an even scarier epidemic that is spreading right below these creep bait headlines. Misleading information about history. Pumpkin spice lattes are also a scary thing that happens this time of year, but I really can't do anything about the lattes. So instead, today, we say nay to the ghastly way these articles try to shock and bait as we reclaim the internet in the name of history and sentiment. Let's go. Four common hair work myths. Myth number one. All Victorian hair work was made for mourning purposes. Hair during the Victorian era was kept, saved, and exchanged for a number of reasons. Sometimes, yes, it was kept to commemorate a deceased loved one, but it was also used for a variety of other sentimental purposes. Lovers might exchange locks of hair for a romantic keepsake, and many friends would even trade hair with one another. Although this may seem a little unusual to us today, this was really no different than children exchanging school pictures with their classmates or even teenagers signing each other's yearbooks. These are only a couple of non-mourning examples of how hair was cherished during the Victorian era. And yes, these are all still sentimental in nature because at the heart of it, it is a physical piece of someone that you care for. But that doesn't mean that they're all dead. Many, dare I say most, pieces of sentimental hair work were made from the hair of someone who was alive and well. And yes, I hear you rushing down to the comments to write, well, they're all dead now. Yes, yes, I have heard that one before. Trust me, we get it. Myth number two. Hair work fell out of fashion when photography was invented. Just as hair work has many myths, so too does Victorian photography. Put the two together and we have the perfect storm of fake news. Ugh, I hate myself for saying that. Do you hate me for saying that? Got bad taste. Well, for starters, let's get a rough timeline. The 1820s brought us the earliest, crudest examples of permanent photography. However, in the year 1839, the daguerreotype process of photography was introduced publicly. And from there, it didn't take long for the process to be sped up, improved, and used worldwide. Hair work traditions, on the other hand, did not begin drastically declining until World War I. So, no matter which way you slice it, sentimental hair work and photography existed alongside one another for well over 50 years. And here's why. Contrary to popular belief, hair work was never meant to be a pre-photography photo, if that makes sense. The image of the person is not the person. However, their hair is a part of them. So as far as the Victorians were concerned, the sentiment was not the same. But that doesn't mean that photography was not important or exciting to them. In many cases, photography was actually a wonderful supplement to hair. And it's not uncommon to see a Victorian photograph alongside a lock of hair or even being featured prominently in the center of a framed wreath. Myth number three. Hair was saved inside of hair receivers until it was used to make art or jewelry. Ah, hair receivers. Yes, they do exist. They are used to receive hair, and they were a common staple on the dresser set of Victorian ladies. 
They can be identified as a small pot with a hole in the lid, and they were made out of a variety of materials, including plated silver, celluloid, and porcelain. But were they used to store hair for art and jewelry? No, not really, no. Almost every hair work technique requires hairs that are smooth, untangled, and all the same length. And hair receiver hair is just not conducive to doing this kind of work. For example, as a Victorian lady brushing my hair, by the time I'm ready to pull the strands off of the brush, they're already quite tangled. Some of them are broken and therefore shorter than the rest. And this is not conducive to working with it. And it's only gonna get worse the longer it sits in the hair receiver. There are one or two exceptions to hair work you can do with receiver hair, but these options are limited and we're certainly not the norm because look at this. Nobody wants to make art with this. It's not pretty. So what was receiver hair used for? Well, it was a fiber that wasn't very pretty, but it was free and renewable. So rather than sentimental, let's think practical. Hair receiver hair was most often used to sew into a hairnet in order to make what was called a rat. And rats can best be described as, well, a hairball that women would then put in their hair in order to style it and add a little extra volume. Myth number four, before working with it, the hair would be soaked in oils to preserve it. I hear this myth from time to time, and I also often get asked by curious strangers what I do to preserve the hair in my own work. So it's super clear that people just assume that the hair as part of the body will decompose if you don't preserve it somehow. And because so many people ask and so many others just assume, I want to set the record straight once and for all. Human hair is comprised of a very strong protein called keratin that makes it extremely resistant to decay. So while the more fleshy bits of our body will decompose without some kind of embalming, hair doesn't need that much help. As long as the hair is clean and dry, away from insects and chemicals, it has the ability to last for thousands of years all on its own. Although it is kind of fun to think that I and the hair workers that came before me need to go into full mortician mode with gloves and chemicals and oils to preserve the hair before we can work with it. Maybe I need to put hair mortician on my business card. So folks, there you have it. Four common hair work myths busted. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon. If you have a question that you'd like to hear answered in an upcoming video, make sure to leave it down below. Until next time, Embalm hair Undertake hair You know, I don't even know why I'm lying to you guys. There isn't any tea in here Just an eyeball <laughs>